Hey, what's up everybody? Pastor Matt here. Got a great viewer question today. Uh, so we'll do a little quick five minute theology video here. The question is, could Jesus have sinned? Of course, the Bible says in Hebrews 4.15 that he was tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Well, to answer that question, we're going to have to do a little bit of homework in what we call biblical Christology. And Christology, of course, is that subcategory of systematic theology in which we study the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Well, if you're new to this channel, my name is Matthew Everhart. I'm the pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA. We are a reformed, conservative, Bible-believing church just north of Pittsburgh. We'd love to have you be with us at some point. Uh, so come check us out, Gospel, Gospel Fellowship PCA. Okay, could Jesus have sinned? Well, here we have to give kind of a qualified answer. And this is why we have to know our biblical Christology very well, because Jesus uh, is actually fully divine, and yet he is also fully human. And all of Christian history affirms both of these truths. And in some sense, it is a bit of a paradox. But Jesus is fully divine. He is the second person of the Trinity. It is right and true to call him God and Lord. And yet at the same time, he's also fully human in his incarnation, which means he had a real body and a real mind and a real will. And so as to his human nature, of course we could say that it was theoretically possible for him to commit acts of sin. So what I mean by that is that his hands were real functioning hands. He could easily pull the trigger of a gun, for instance. Uh, he could easily reach out and steal something that did not belong to him. His hands fully had those capabilities. His eyes, as true human seeing eyes, were fully capable of setting upon a woman that was not his wife or to covet that which did not belong to him. And so with respect to his abilities in the body and of the mind, of course we could say that yes, he could have theoretically sinned. But as to his divine nature, this is where we must assert that no, it would be impossible for the Son of Man to sin. And here's why. Uh, though he was fully human, as you and I are, Jesus is different with respect to his divine nature because he does not possess that inherent quality that we call original sin. Now, you and I, we are the posterity of Adam, and so we are already born with sinful inclination the very moment that we are conceived. We are already sinners by nature. And as soon as we're capable of performing the functions of sin, uh, hitting our sister or screaming in defiance against our parents, uh, we been, begin to commit actual sin as well. But Jesus did not have the sinful nature. And this is due, of course, to that beautiful and wonderful doctrine of the virgin birth. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And this is why it's incredibly important that Jesus' birth came about by the virgin birth of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit overshadows Mary, according to the early chapters of the gospel. This essentially breaks that line of original sin, and therefore Jesus is not born with that depraved nature, that inward corruption that the rest of us have that works its way out into original sin. Now let's talk for uh, a moment about temptation. What does it mean to be truly tempted? The verse says that he was tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. Well, here, it's really important for us to define temptation accurately. And to do that, I want to talk about temptation in three categories. First, there's the inward temptation. Second, there's temptation of opportunity. And third, there is temptation of the demonic or the external way. Now, obviously, Jesus was clearly tempted by that third external form of temptation, the temptation of the devil or the demons, or even when other wicked people, or even otherwise good people try to tempt us to do something wrong, we can say that we have been tempted in that sense. So uh, Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by Satan, according to M Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Uh, Joseph was tempted externally by Potiphar's wife. And so that's a true and real temptation when externally we are lured into sin as though to take the bait. Uh, that second form of sin would be, or temptation, excuse me, uh, would be temptations of opportunity, where there's an opportunity to sin, and yet we don't do it. Or maybe we do. Let's say you're walking out of the quickie mart, and you realize that the cash register is wide open, and there's that cash, and there's no one attending the register, and there's the door. That would be a temptation by way of opportunity. Uh, and you can say you're truly tempted to do that, even if you didn't really want to do it, and you walk straight out the door, and you deny that temptation. But the first kind of temptation is where it gets a little bit fuzzy because um, the first kind of temptation is that inward temptation where temptation is of that nature. The desires themselves want things 
that would be wicked to obtain. And here uh, we think of the doctrine of concupiscence, which is that sinful people, those of us with a sinful nature, we're born with these disordered desires where we want things that are wrong. For instance, if you lay awake all night lusting over your neighbor's wife or thinking about how you want to kill somebody on the other side of the world, and maybe he's not physically present, but you hate this person and you want to kill him. All night you're, tempta you're tempted with this lust or this, uh, this murderous uh, vitriol in the spirit. Um, you could say that you resisted that temptation if you woke up the next day and you said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to commit that adultery. I'm not going to kill this person. Um, in some sense, you can say you resisted that temptation because you didn't do it. Uh, but on another sense, you've already sinned because that kind of disordered desire is a concupiscent a sinful desire. Now, the Roman Catholics, they have a different understanding of this than the Protestants. The Roman Catholics will tell you that concupiscence, that disordered desire that's latent within the human nature is not sin until it is agreed upon or validated or ratified by an act of the will or the body. And so to have those disordered, disordered desires but not to act on them according to the Catholics is not sin. Uh, but the Protestants, we say something else. We say that even to have those disordered desires is already a manifestation of the sinful nature and must needs be repented of. So, because Jesus did not have original sin, because he is of a perfect divine and righteous nature, the divine nature of the Father and the Spirit, because Christ is the second person of the Trinity, we can say then without any further qualification that no, it would have been impossible for Jesus to sin. And while his hand could have balled up and struck his neighbor or reached out and grabbed that which was not his or his eyes were capable of setting upon something covetously or uh, um, lustfully, yet he did not have that desire within him. And so there was no corrupt desire within the Son of Man at all. So praise be to God, he was tempted in every way, just as we are with reference to those external temptations of the demonic or the circumstantial temptations of opportunity. But he was not tempted with that concupiscent, disordered desire, which is already greed or lust in the heart. That he did not have because of his perfect divine nature. Praise be to God, we have a perfect Christ who fulfilled the law of God in every possible way. His active obedience was flawless, and therefore his passive obedience or his suffering for us avails by way of atoning sacrifice. All right, I hope that helped. Thank you so much for watching. Do love you lots, and we'll talk to you later.